What's up guys, Professor Ben here in Japan. I just want to answer the question about the behavior with the kids there. And I thought I would just make a little chart for you to show you how I go through it with my instructors and how I've done it for a long time. I've been teaching for many years. I um, have probably 10,000 students by now from ages three all the way to 60 something. Um, some of them have been with me for, uh, you know, just a trial and some of them have stayed with me for 12, 13 years. And each of those people is, um, I experienced both success and failures no matter how long they were with me. So lots of lessons learned. But when I talk about behavior for kids, um, it's not just about the kid, it's about everything that's going on in that environment. So I have a little triangle here for reference. At the top here is rules. Um, you got class structure, how your classes are structured and organized. Um, and then also parent partners here. And so what we're gonna talk about here uh, with the rules first is orientation. So how are you orientating everybody? Uh, to your classroom, that new kid or that new student. Um, you should be taking them through, you know, not just the history of your school and what you do, but also uh, the rules, like the rules and why you have those rules. And then um, in class, when, everything, when things are going on, sometimes at the beginning of class, I will remind everybody about the rules. Or even when we're starting to do sparring or rolling, I might remind them again for safety purposes. Remember, don't punch anybody harder than you want to get punched. You know, we're just sparring right now. We're not winning the championship. You know, all these different rules. You know, don't slam anybody. Uh, don't walk on the mat with your shoes on because it, has, it puts germs in your face. is going to go on those germs um, from outside germ. Um, so these different reminders that we have when, when kids or when adults are doing something that we deem wrong in class. And then you have progressive discipline. So one of the things about your rules is that you want to explain to parents and also explain to the, to the kids is that there's a progressive discipline. So you, just like when you work at an office anywhere, you know, the first strike, you're not out, right? Usually it's a progressive kind of thing. You know, they do paperwork on you. They do more paperwork. And finally, you know, they fire you. But, you know, it could be egregious. If it's egregious at the beginning, they might fire you from the beginning, right? But it should be a progressive discipline pattern. And you want to show the, the adults and um, the parents and the kids, you know, how you do that. So it might be the first time that you're talking, you know, please be quiet. You know, if, you, if you're interrupting and being unsafe, okay. Now you're going to sit by your parents for five minutes um, or you're going to miss the game at the end of class, dodgeball at the end of class. Um, you know, if you do it again on the third time after you set up for five minutes, OK, that's the end of your day. And uh, we'll see you next class and hopefully you'll behave next class and you can do the whole thing. You know, so you have a progressive discipline that you already have and each one of your instructors already has in their mind what they're going to do as certain things happen. Everybody's different, but if you have kind of the. Uh, some concrete rules there uh, as far as your progressive discipline, then you can handle it much better in the moment. You know, when things are going on, everything's going crazy, other kids are running around, you can tell that kid exactly what's next in the process if they don't listen. Um, but also parent partners here. So you have here, I have, I tell my parents um, during orientation and also during class every day, that it's 50-50. We reinforce what you guys do at home and you guys should reinforce at home what we do here. We're trying to help your child grow into a great functioning adult socially, you know, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, all this stuff. But we have to do it together if because that's why you brought them. You didn't bring them just to learn how to do arm bars and learn how to punch or kick. You, help, you brought them to us because you saw some things in their life that you want them to, or that they were missing in their, in their little lives or in adults' lives that they were missing that you want us to help with. Um, so we have to reinforce each other. If we're doing all the discipline and you let them do whatever at home and just go buck wild, then what we're doing is not going to work, right? Um, and discipline, even progressive discipline, is part of the process. So you have to let parents know that when your child sits out or if they're new and they can't behave for a while, that it's part of the process, that this is nothing new. I've taught you know, thousands of kids, kids with ADHD, kids with all kinds of things. And this is part of the process as they learn and come into a new culture, just like when you go into the military or another organization that's really rigid from being just, you know, free to do whatever you want. It's it's mind changing and it's and it's life changing. Right. So it takes a little bit of time to get adjusted. That's why they have basic training. Um, but this discipline is part of the process. So don't get mad that your son had to sit out for two classes or that your three-year-old or five-year-old only got to do um, half a class. They got to do 30 minutes of class. Oh, well, it's okay because in a couple weeks, now they're acting a little bit better. Now they lasted 45 minutes. Look at that. Oh, next time they lasted this long. You know, now they're doing the whole class all of a sudden. So 
it's uh, one of those things where you have to um, um, let them know that this is not, you're not being mean to your kid, but it's part of the process and you're not worried about them acting like a kid. So never try to make a kid act like an adult. Um, kids are kids. They're supposed to have lots of energy. If you try to make a kid like act like an adult, you will always fail. And if the parents think that they brought them to you so their kid can sit down and shut up and act like an adult, they're in the wrong place. That's not what you do. You help them grow. Um, teaching kids is not um, super rigid in the sense that you want them to act like adults. It's more like directing water. Like they're going to flow. So you just have to make the water flow where you want it to go, but you're not going to stop the water. Um, you're not going to stop them from being kids. So um, then down here, I have class structure, if you can see that. So the class structure there, you have what is your ratio right here? What is your ratio of teachers to students? You want to have a good ratio. I try to keep about a one to five um, um, for across the board. But if I can't do that, you have to remember that also each teacher has their own ratio. So some teachers have more patience than other ones. Some teachers have, you know, little patience at all. Maybe they're filling in from adult class to teach kids and they don't really teach kids all the time, but maybe somebody's sick. You have to realize that you might need some extra help from that day because they can't, they don't have the patience built up as some other instructors have. So student to teacher ratio, but also remembering some teachers have their own ratio. So like for me, I can teach a class of a million kids by myself um, because I've done it for so long and I know how to make the, the water flow. Some some folks can only teach like one or two, like almost private lessons um, for kids anyway. Um, and then remember attention span. So I got attention span there. Generally speaking, a kid's attention span and even a, like even adults right now only have 15 minutes attention span. But kids, it's usually their age. So if you're dealing with a seven year old, you got seven minutes and that's why you need lesson plans. So your lesson plans are going to tell you like, hey, let's switch between this and something else now. We've done this for a few minutes. So even if we're working on an arm bar from guard, it's like super hard for these five year olds to do it. And sometimes I teach the same move for a whole week, like every day until they get it down. But I might do it for five minutes, stop where we are, get some water, come back, do it for another couple minutes, get some water, come back. And eventually they'll pick it up, especially if you're doing if you have a standardized curriculum and, and, and um, you're doing it a few days or sometimes a few weeks, kind of the same moves um, in your curriculum. But that's kind of the thoughts there. So remember, you got rules, class structure, and parent partners. And this is how we deal with uh, the behavior for kids. All right, Professor Ben now, if you have any questions, let me know. See you guys.